Hello! In this video we will be demonstrating the Fit Pull Lengths to 10 feature, which is an exciting new feature addition to version 18 of PLS CAD. This feature will work on any PLS pole structure with multiple poles in which there is a tin surface present that covers the structure's footprint. This command will automatically adjust pole embedments, Z elevations, and even pole lengths to ensure that all poles have their ground line locations match what is seen in the PLS CAD model. It is very important for A-Train structures built on significant side slopes to take this process into account. As we begin to explore this feature, located at Structures, Automatic Spotting, Fit Pole Lengths to 10, please note that it does require the Optimum Spotting capability, which is an extra cost module you must add on to your PLS CAD license. So if you discover that the command is grayed out and you can't select it, then it likely means you do not have the licensing option enabled, in which case you'll want to reach out to our sales team to purchase a license for it. Once you activate the feature, you'll see it has our new standard tabbed report dialog style with one tab that controls how the feature will work, and another where you can choose the various structures and or electrical circuits you wish to use this feature on. After the notes that describe what the feature does, you'll see that the first option is to determine if you want the feature to simply report on the changes it would like to make, or the option to actually have the software modify your structure files. The advantage of this feature is so that if you're new to using the feature, or if you have some unique qualities to your project, you may wish to use the feature in report only mode first, so that you can test out the other settings and make sure you have the options you'd like to use before the software goes through the effort of actually modifying your structure models. The next setting allows you to define the thresholds for maximum amounts of over and under embedments. A typical default most folks use for embedment is 10% plus 2, where you take 10% of the pole length and add 2 feet to arrive at your standard embedment. If we look at the structure in this example model, you will see how both of these poles are using the standard 10% plus 2 embedment and are all at the same elevation leading to one pole being exposed above the tin surface and the other that extends below the ground. You might also notice that the ground is colored green in my screen, which is something added just for the purposes of clarity in making this video. Let's look at how this feature will adjust the Z-coordinate of the two poles and adjust the embedment within our tolerances to fit the changes in the tin surface. Before we dig into using this feature and seeing how it works though, we also need to talk about this setting here that allows you control over the conductor elevations. This setting allows moving the entire structure up or down in an effort to find a solution that meets embedment override thresholds, but can either prioritize pole size, clearances, or embedment standardization. Moving the entire structure up or down is done by modifying the height adjustment field in the structure's modify dialog. This changes the position of what's referred to as the structure hub. The structure hub is the 0, 0, 0 coordinate in the PLS pole model and can be visually seen in PLS CAD as the origin of the structure compass. The structure hub is the insertion point and its location determines the position of the structure model in PLS CAD. So now let's take a look at how this feature can work on this structure and customize it to properly fit the tin surface. Also, please note that anytime you use this feature, you always have to go back and reanalyze the structure to ensure it's structurally adequate after the modification. Because the point of fixity changes and the above ground pole length in the PLS pole model changes, it will impact how the load flows through the structure, which will ultimately impact its usage. Let's start by actually running a different report first to see where the poles currently sit. I'll navigate to Terrain, Tin, Leg and Guy Extension Report. And when we look at the results for this report and just focus on this column, we can see the additional length needed for the poles to intersect the tin surface are negative 2.5 and positive 0.5 feet. This means the left pole has its point of fixity below the tin surface and the right pole has its point of fixity above. You can also get similar information by running a construction staking report and comparing the modeled embedment to the actual embedment. The modeled embedment represents what's modeled in PLS pole, which for these poles is the typical 10% plus 2. So for the 60 foot poles like this structure has, the embedment is 8.0 feet. However, because the left pole is falling below the tin surface by 2.5 feet, it means that the actual embedment is 10.5 feet, and the right pole being 0.5 feet above the tin means its actual embedment is 7.5 feet. The goal is to get these modeled embedments to exactly match the actual embedments. Or if you're looking at the leg and guy extension report, you want the additional length to intersect the tin to be zero. 
So let's start by using this feature and saying that an over embedment of 4.5 feet is acceptable and we don't want to allow any under embedment so we'll leave that set to zero. We'll also keep things simple for now and choose the setting to make sure the wire attachment elevations stay right where they are and that the program will know that making a structure height adjustment isn't allowed. And we'll also check the option to go ahead and modify the structure so we can graphically see what it looks like when we run the report. Here you can see the results showing both poles had an existing embedment of 8 feet, but now the left pole shows an embedment of 10.5 feet, and the right pole, since it was above the tin and we specified no under embedment allowed, it had to put in a 5 foot taller pole and then over embed it by 4.0 feet for a total embedment of 12.5 feet. But if we look at the end result graphically, we can see that both poles now land perfectly on the tin surface, and if we run the leg and guy extension report again, we can see that the additional length needed to intersect the tin is zero. And if we run the construction staking report again as well, we can see that the actual embedment now perfectly matches the model embedment. Now let's quickly take a look at a few other scenarios for using this feature. So let's go back to the original model where the left pole is below the tin and the right is above it by the same distance as we previously had. This time let's run the feature but choose the ability to specify an under embedment maximum threshold of 1 foot and let's keep a maximum over embedment threshold of 4.5 feet. It's recommended not to go too much larger than 4 feet on either of these inputs because if a pole needs more embedment override than that it's probably best to simply put in a 5 foot taller or shorter pole. We will leave this setting unchanged and keep the wires at the existing elevations. And when we look at the results now, we can see that because the right pole was only 0.5 feet above the tin, and it's less than the under embedment threshold, the program kept the pole length the same this time, but under embedded it by 0.5 feet. And the left pole, since it needed 2.5 feet of over embedment, and this was less than the threshold of 4.5 feet, it kept the pole length the same as well, and over embedded it by 2.5 feet. Also note that the program is not just changing the embedments of these poles, it's also changing the z-coordinate of their bases in the PLS pole model so that the above ground portion of the poles start right at the tin surface. This can be seen if you open up the PLS pole model and compare the ground line of each pole relative to the structure hub or the 000, 000 coordinate at the center of the structure compass. Another way we can use this feature is to allow for structure height adjustments which moves the entire structure up or down. Let's try this again with all the same settings except let's check this option to lower the entire structure model. When we run the feature this time the first thing the program does is it will lower the height adjustment such that all poles in the structure are either at or below the tin surface. This is analogous to running the structure's snap base or legs to tin command first and will result in one of the poles having a typical standard embedment, i.e. 10% plus 2, and all other poles will need to be over embedded or shorter in pole length. In the case of this structure, it is lowered by 0.5 feet so that the right pole has a perfect 10% plus 2 embedment and the left pole goes 3 feet below the tin surface and needs to be over embedded by 3 feet for a total of 11 feet. Please note that when using these features to adjust the height of a structure, it is imperative to verify clearances, uplift, insulator swing, etc., and regardless of any options chosen, it's imperative to reanalyze the structure. But as you can see, the poles of the structure are right on the tin surface, with the left pole having a custom embedment 3 feet over standard, and the right pole having a standard 10% plus 2 embedment, and the overall structure has a height adjustment down a half a foot. And the last way to use this feature is to also allow for positive or upward height adjustments of the structure. We will revert back again to the original model and run the feature again with mostly the same settings, but this time we will remove the allowance for under embedding and run the feature. The right pole was originally half a foot above the tin, so because the under embed threshold is now set to zero, it means that a taller pole must be substituted, and here we can see it's now a 65 foot tall pole. The left pole was already 2.5 feet below the tin, so it doesn't need to be changed to a taller pole, just over embedded 2.5 feet. However, since both poles would have been over embedded, and by choosing the option to raise the structure, it means that the structure can be height adjusted upward by 2.5 feet, which causes the left pole to now have a standard 10% plus 2 embedment, and the right pole is a little over embedded by 1.5 feet for a total of 10 feet of embedment. 
and if we look at the cross-section view again, we can see the poles hit the tin surface perfectly and the structure is now overall 2.5 feet higher than it was previously because of that height adjustment. And again, remember, you must check clearances, swing, uplift, and structure usages after using this feature. We hope that you enjoyed this video and find it helpful in demonstrating how this new feature works and how you'll be able to use it on your projects to make this process of fitting multiple pole structures to the Pila's CAD tin surface in significantly less time with significantly less effort. Thank you for watching. For more information about our software, including additional videos and tech notes, please check out our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, and other information, please contact the email addresses shown on the screen. Thank you for watching this video and your interest in our software, the industry standard and overhead line design.